right corner, Astoria, three on the way. Ten points, Notre Dame lead. Down and Notre Dame again. Lord pass on over to Astoria. Drives baseline, reverse layup up and good. A brilliant drive. At the rim, Ponzi Colson. Now to beat you with drives the lane for the poster rising champ. Hello again, Irish fans, and welcome to this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Basketball with Mike Bray. I'm Jack Nolan, and Coach, you knew when you looked at this schedule you were going to hit some bumps. Well, here's the biggest bump of the year, your first three-game losing streak since your first year in the league. Where are you at right now? You know what? I think our frame of mind is great, Jack, because our leadership is great. We fully expect to take punches in the ACC. We are taking some big ones now. But um, when you have a stable group and a mature group and a sharp group, they hang together and just want to get better before we take the floor again. January was a tough month. Nine games, including two stretches of three games in seven days. What was the nation's leading free throw shooting team has missed a few in recent games. You think your legs are a little tired? I think fatigue starts to creep in a little bit. And now for me, how to practice them, how to get them time off. Our bye week comes later in the month, so we, we really can't steal anything yet. Um, but you're always trying to keep guys energized and fresh as much as possible between games. The Irish began the week traveling down to Atlanta to take on this year's Cinderella team in the ACC. We'll show you a game that literally came down to the final second right after this timeout. Inside Notre Dame Basketball is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Team Notre Dame Partners, Coca-Cola, Under Armour, and Gatorade. Inside Notre Dame Basketball is also brought to you by Bank of America, Canon, Xfinity, Delta Airline, proud to be the official airline of Notre Dame Athletics, Notre Dame Ticket Exchange, powered by Vivid Seats, Nissan, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, Sirius XM Satellite Radio, and UPS. Georgia Tech really is the Cinderella story of the league this year. There were some that didn't think they would win a conference game. They had already beaten top 10 teams, Carolina and Florida State, handily when you came to town. Well, Josh Pashner's done a great job in his first year down there. Um, they believe at home, you know, beating North Carolina in their first league game. They beat Florida State, and they were re very ready for a sold-out crowd. Now, despite the noon game, your guys were ready to play. And despite that sellout crowd, you went on a 10-0 run to take a 19-9 lead. Well, I love that we got off to a good start. You know, that always has helped us on the road. We're three and two in our road games so far, and the ones we've won, we've gotten out of the gate pretty darn good. Um, but like any thing in this league, Tech answers and gets some momentum back before half. It's hard to get everybody playing well on the same day. Vastoria had five points in that 10-point run. He never scored again. Yeah, he was uh, fabulous in that stretch and then couldn't finish for us. And you know, sometimes with Steve, the bar is so high for him, you're amazed when he doesn't make an open shot. But he's human, and I think fatigue kicked in a little bit. V.J. Beecham was outstanding. 12 points in the first half, 11 in the second half. I think V.J. Beecham right now on the offensive end of the floor has kind of found his rhythm. He is playing well for us. We need him to defend and rebound more. But you got a couple of big threes down the stretch of the first half, one from Beecham, one from Farrell. So you were only down four at halftime. Yeah, you know, we, we went into halftime with a little bit of momentum. Um, you know, we start, we changed the lineup in the second half. We started Torres and played zone. He gave us a great lift, taking a couple charges. And you feel you're going to be in a dogfight now on the road. But your guys came out six straight points in the second half to get the lead back. You know, we, we got off to a good start. We played zone. Again, Torres gave us good life. We were in a better flow offensively. And, and you know, you, you, you know you're going to be in one that goes to game situations. It had that feel. And you know when you're on the road, you got to keep the crowd out of it and take the momentum away. But Tech was able to come right back, and they held the lead for most of the rest of the half. They did. They answered our run. And then we were digging out of a hole the whole second half. But this group has done that before, especially on the road, dug out of a hole and made it game situations. And we got the sense that here we go yeah. again from a positive perspective. You're tied at 60 and you have the ball with time running out and it looked like the worst thing that could happen would be overtime. That's uh, the perfect position to be in because we hadn't played great. Here we are with the ball and a chance to win it. We'd won a bunch in those situations. We got that shot clock down so the differential wasn't much. I think Matty took that layup with about two or three on the shot clock. Okay shot, not a great shot, but one that he's made 
But man, we just didn't get back and we weren't alert in defensive balance and they make a great play over the top to score a layup at the buzzer. Really tough way to lose. So coming back, you get back on the practice floor. What do you say to the guys? You know, it, it's, it, it, it's it, you say it in the locker room. I mean, you know, I've tried to talk to them through this stretch that we knew big punches were coming in this league. We got to stay together. We got to hang in there. We got to accept responsibility for things we're going to do better, but we got to move on quick. After the 62-60 loss in Atlanta, the Irish had Duke coming to town for a big Monday game, so not a lot of time to stew. We'll take you to this year's matchup with the Blue Devils right after this timeout. You've had unprecedented success <laughs> against Duke since you joined the league. You had won five of your previous six meetings, so this team had great confidence going into the game. Great confidence, and I was thinking about the position our program's in. Here comes Duke to town, a lot of pros last time I checked, and we're supposed to beat them again. I love how the tables have turned right there, and we were very ready to play uh, again, but I thought Duke, given how they played at Wake Forest to win on the road the second half, was starting to kind of find themselves, and they played really well here and answered any run we had. But a guy who played really well for you again, VJ Beecham with his third game of 20 or more in four outings. He's becoming more and more consistent. He's, um, he's feeling good and he's feeling good at the right time. There's no question about it. I think for him, we need him to score. We need him to be confident if we're going to get to that NCAA tournament. It was close for most of the first half, but then Duke went on that 16-4 run at the end to take a 12-point lead. Yeah, we were we were horrible offensively in the first half. No spacing, you know, we took bad shots. The clock got down and then we forced something. I was really disappointed in what we did offensively. Changed the lineup in the second half, went small, opened up the floor, and we were able to score 49 points in the second half. The problem was we couldn't stop them. Those second half adjustments worked well. Do you carry those forward? We do. I think one of the things we have to do thinking moving forward is opening up the floor more for driving areas. And even when we have two bigs in the game, to kind of play a little more of our five out motion. I think that's something moving forward. We've worked on it, we'll continue to work on it. That's important for us. Moment's never been too big for TJ Gibbs. He had 12 points for you in the second half. Fluger had seven points, four rebounds. Well, I was happy, even in a loss. Those two guys are back playing well. They had struggled a little bit, both of them. Uh, in Atlanta and games previous, but we need them playing well. They are both tough guys and keys for us. And I know you didn't defend as well for 40 minutes as you wanted to, but you had another stretch in the second half when all looked lost. You went on a 12-0 run, which means you got some stops as well. And you, you came all the way back to pull the win in one. Well, I, I sh it shows the, the kind of guys we have. You know, we throw the ball away against the press. We're down 13. We call timeout. We go on a 12-0 run. We come back. Steve Astoria has a layup that he makes. 90% of the time to give us a one point lead. He doesn't make it and they come down and make a big shot. We just didn't have enough to finish it. We couldn't get enough stops. We are falling into the trap that we probably do not talk about Bonzi Colson enough right now because he yeah. is so consistent. And he was again during the 12 point run, he had six points, two rebounds and assist. He finished with 17 points and nine rebounds. Yeah, I mean, he was a warrior for us, especially in the second half. You know, we played him as kind of our only big guy and he was really good at handling the ball up top, uh, posting late in the clock. But you know, the one thing about Bonzi, He's a warrior, he's a fighter. Um, his energy gave us a chance. One other group participant we have to mention, the folks that filled this building, one of the best crowds of your tenure, and they never backed off even when you weren't playing well. Uh, you know, the one thing about our crowds this year, they have been behind this group. I think they really love this team. How do you not love this group and how they play together and how they fight? But our home crowds have been fabulous. We've got four more home games. We need them for every one of them if we're going to make the NCAA tournament. So the Irish lose to Duke 84-74, but do not despair. Lots of games left on this Irish schedule. When we come back, we'll talk with Martinus Gebbin. Before this season, junior forward Martinus Gebbin had started a grand total of just one game for the Fighting Irish. But with Zach August moving on to the pros, this season is Gebbin's time, and he has started each of Notre Dame's first 23 games, turning in one of his best performances against the talented front line of the Purdue Boilermakers and playing a key role in the conference opener at Pitt with 10 points and 9 rebounds despite foul trouble. 
Recently, I had the chance to sit down for a chat with the native of Vilnius, Lithuania. Fluger will inbound right in front of the Irish bench to our left. Fluger gets it underneath the Kevin for the two-handed power jam. And the Irish have increased their lead to six, 58-52. Talk about how far you've come from starting one game your first two years to now starting every game. Uh, just just a lot of hard work in the in the off seasons, uh, especially with all the coaches. Uh, uh, used to be with Coach Anthony Solomon and now with Coach Humphrey. Um, working in the weight room with uh, Coach Rolinski, um, just, just putting in a lot of hard work in, in the repetition. I know opposing coaches have noticed. I'm not sure the fans have cut on yet, but you're a really good passer. Where does that come from? Uh, me being from Europe, just, just knowing how to play the basketball and, and being patient with the ball, I think uh, uh, I'm able to, to see things happen and develop uh, and not rush with my decision making. So let's expand on that. Tell me the differences that you noticed when you came to play American basketball, first in high school and now in the ACC. What are the major differences? I think the game of basketball in the United States is much more physical. Uh, Obviously, athletes here are much more, they're, they're stronger, they're more athletic, they're faster. So I think the game depends a lot on the athleticism and that's what the players rely on. Whereas in Europe, the athleticism isn't necessarily there, but people make up for it with their, with their skill and their finesse and their understanding of the game. How did you end up coming from Lithuania to the United States? Well, it's, it's been a dream of mine to come over to the United States and, and play basketball and get an education here. And, uh, one summer in 2011, I had an opportunity to attend the camp, and the director of the camp ended up uh, being impressed with me and my performance during it, and he put me in contact with a couple of people in the United States. So how big an adjustment has that been? How hard is it to leave family and friends and cross an ocean, not just to visit, but to live? Yeah, I mean, it's it's been difficult, especially the first time uh, going into the complete unknown, because I wasn't sure who my coach was or who my host family was going to be, but I, I think I've adjusted pretty well, and uh, I was able to, to make a lot of friends here, and uh, that helped me not to be homesick and miss my family and friends back home. How have your parents dealt with you being over here? Good. Actually, my parents uh, moved to the United States uh, in 2014, so they, they're living now in Maryland, and. Yeah, I think they still miss me, but uh, being able to see me much more frequently than they did in high school uh, is better for them. What was it that made you decide to come to Notre Dame? I think it was a mix of uh, academics, um, obviously basketball, and uh, my faith. Uh, I'm, I'm Catholic, and uh, being able to go to Notre Dame was, I thought it was really special. Uh, in addition to great academics that Notre Dame has, uh, which sets me up for a future, a life after basketball. What's been the best thing about playing for Notre Dame so far? The experience. I love uh, competing with my teammates day in, day out, and uh, being able to go out there and contribute to our team's success means a lot to me. First season for Martinus starting, and I want your opinion, but in my opinion, he's exceeded my expectations for him. He's really delivered for us. I'm, I'm thrilled with him. Again, he is not playing long, long minutes, but he starts a game for us. He gives us a physical presence in the post, playing post defense. He's a great screener in our offense, getting guys open. He's very good with the ball and a good passer. You know, I don't think we're in the position we're in unless Martin Gavin over the course of 23 games has really delivered for us. This week's Ask Coach Bray question and freshman John Mooney runs the inside Notre Dame basketball fast break right after this time. It's time now for the experts at TireAct.com question of the week for Coach Bray. Now, if you would like to send in a question for Coach Bray, just log on to und.com, scroll down the page three or four times and the Ask Coach Bray box will pop up in the left side of the screen. Now this week's question comes from season ticket holder Renee Buell of Michigan City, Indiana. Coach, I know you've played drums with Todd Rundgren. <laughs> if you had a chance to play with any rock band, what band would you choose? Oh, Bruce Springsteen. Yeah, I, I would love, you know, he's got the mighty Max Weinberg as his drummer. <laughs> I would love to sit in for one song with him. Yeah, I get to dabble and have fun with that, but I, I better stick to my real job. <laughs> The ACC season is heading into the home stretch, a time when a player or two who have not played much to this point in the season are called upon to step up and help in the critical games ahead. One of those players for the Irish could be freshman John Mooney, a talented young physical big man with an accurate outside shot. 
With that in mind, we thought it was a good time to give the Florida native a shot at running the inside Notre Dame basketball fast break. First car you ever drove? Toyota Camry. Favorite all-time movie? Remember the Titans. Who was your role model? My dad. One thing the public would be surprised to learn about you? I'm an avid golfer. Twitter or Instagram? Twitter. Favorite part of practice? Uh, kills. Worst part of practice? Kills. Best part of your game? Uh, I would say shooting. Part of your game you need to work on? Uh, I would say dribbling. Assistant coach who is most like Coach Bray? Comfort. Ryan Ayers? Shooter. Eric Atkins? Shooter. Harold Swanigan? Big body. Best defender on the team? Uh, Steve. Best leaper on the team? DJ. Best dunker on the team? Uh, Rex. Worst dunker on the team? Steve. Best dresser on the team? Nick. Worst dresser on the team? TJ. Best singer on the team? Uh, DJ. Best comedian on the team? Steve. Beard growing competition. You or Coach Bray, who wins? Me. John Mooney is a confident young man, and maybe you shouldn't get in a beard growing competition. I don't him. think so. I mean, you know, he's kind of been shaving all year, but I think he could really sprout one. But I'm thrilled that he's with our program, Jack. He's got a really bright future. It's time now for this week's Notre Dame Ticket Exchange, powered by Vivid Seats, Play of the Week. There are few players in college basketball who are better at finding open shooters with inbounds passes than Notre Dame's Matt Farrell. Against Duke, Notre Dame's Matty Ice found V.J. Beecham twice for easy hoops. Inbound to Beecham who flies through the lane for a two-handed jam. Beecham now off the inbounds, knocks down the jumper. Notre Dame's back to within seven. There is literally no time to catch your breath during an ACC season other than your break week, which comes up later in the month. And now you have to go to Chapel Hill to take on a Carolina team while you're trying to break a three-game losing streak. That said, this nucleus has had a lot of success with Carolina. They've beaten them three times. Well, you think about, we have played championship games against the North Carolina program, the 2015 ACC championship, the East Regional last season. We have been in big games, and you're right, our nucleus has experienced success against them. We're going to need that confidence to win in Chapel Hill. What do you have to do to beat them? Well, we got to keep them off the backboard. They pound the backboard, and that's an area where we've been weak. We've got to open the floor up and get their big guys out and drive a little bit. Um, we're going to have to score to beat them because they're really gifted offensively. Then you come home to take on a Wake Forest team you'll be favored to beat, but that won't be easy. They just almost knocked off Duke. Well, Wake Forest is an NCAA tournament team, and they've been a very good road team. Um, gifted team, gifted group. Again, another example of the depth of this league. So, surprise, another challenging week for Coach Bray's team in the ACC. We hope you'll join us again next week when we break down the North Carolina and Wake Forest games. Until then, for Coach Bray, I'm Jack Nolan. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, go Irish. Inside Notre Dame Basketball is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Team Notre Dame Partners, Coca-Cola, Under Armour, and Gatorade. Inside Notre Dame Basketball is also brought to you by Bank of America, Canon, Xfinity, Delta Airline, proud to be the official airline of Notre Dame Athletics. Notre Dame Ticket Exchange, powered by Vivid Seats. Nissan, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, Sirius XM Satellite Radio, and UPS.